We've just had the release of a brand new photo from the James Webb Space Telescope, and while we're all gushing about how exciting it is and how beautiful the image looks, you might be wondering why is the star in it so spiky? Let's take a look at that question. The video I uploaded right before this one goes into all the details of why this brand new image is so exciting, but in short, it's in focus and everything looks beautiful. This in itself is a huge achievement for the Webb telescope because it means that the 18 mirror segments have all been correctly aligned and they're now acting as intended, as one enormous 6.5 meter diameter mirror. This enormous mirror means that the resolution that JWST can achieve is absolutely incredible. It can collect so much light that even faint distant objects can be seen in incredible detail. Just take a look at all of those galaxies behind the star in this image. We can already see loads of detail in them and us astronomers are already trying to see interesting things in them. We're looking at the different shapes of these galaxies. We're already asking, hey, is that a supernova in that one? And can we see any gravitational lensing? All of this is absolutely incredible, but lots of people are now starting to ask, why is the star of this image so spiky? Of course, stars in space are enormous fiery spheres. Spheres, not spiky things. So why do we see such obvious lines in this photo? These lines, or to give them their proper name, diffraction spikes, are entirely fictitious in the sense that they don't exist in reality. They're purely artifacts in the image caused by the telescope itself. They aren't unique to JWST either. We saw them in images from the Hubble Space Telescope, and you can even see them in photos you take yourself on your camera or phone here on Earth. So what does cause them? Well, as the name diffraction spikes suggest, they're caused by a physical process called diffraction, which is all to do with the way that the light moves through the telescope to reach the detectors on board. In fact, there are actually two separate sources of the diffraction on board Webb, and these two combine to give the pattern of spikes that we see in this new image. If we do some counting, we see that there are six really bright spikes that are pretty obvious, and they'll give all photos of bright stars from Webb a distinct look. And we can also see a fainter horizontal line in the center as well. Let's start with the cause of the six brightest lines and we'll cover the faint horizontal one afterwards. Now, it's no coincidence that there are six bright diffraction spikes and the JWST primary mirror is hexagonal. Each edge of this hexagonal mirror diffracts light in such a way as to provide one spike to the image. Having said that, what actually is diffraction? Well, it's the bending of light around objects or openings, so it's really just how the light that hits the JWST mirror bounces around and behaves in response to the exact shape of that mirror. The typical example of diffraction is a wave moving towards a small slit in a wall, and as the wave passes through this small slit, it bends on the other side. The slit acts like a source of a spherical wave, and the new shape of this wave is called a diffraction pattern. We can get more complicated diffraction patterns if we introduce more slits, and each of these slits acts as a source for a separate spherical wave. These waves then interact on the other side of the wall, and they can produce really complicated waveforms. However, the relevant thing to know here is that if you replace the slit with a mirror, the exact same thing would happen just on the other side of the wall. The mirror acts like a source for a spherical wave, and it produces an interesting looking diffraction pattern. This is what happens with the Webb telescope. Light travels through space and eventually hits the hexagonal mirror. It bounces back off of the secondary mirror and then into the innards of the telescope and its detectors. Now, it's a little bit more complicated than the initial example we looked at because that was a two-dimensional example and Webb lives in a 3D world. The mirror isn't just a simple slit, but instead it's a hexagonal one and the complicated diffraction pattern it produces leads to the six diffraction spikes in the image. We can take a look at this image here and see how different shaped mirrors lead to different numbers of spikes in an image. If your mirror shape is non-circular and it has an even number of sides, then it produces the same number of spikes as the number of sides. And if it's an odd number of sides, it produces double the number of spikes as the number of sides. This is the main cause of spikes for cameras on Earth, because typically if you close the aperture on a camera, the shutter tends to be a series of blades, and this results in a non-circular shaped aperture. If you do have a circular mirror, then it can still cause diffraction but instead of producing spikes, it produces concentric ring patterns. So this is one cause of the spikes in the web image, and the other is actually due to the struts that hold up the secondary mirror. These struts block a little bit of the light, and again, this causes a diffraction pattern as the light has to bend around these struts to reach the mirror. The number of struts affects how many spikes are produced, and each strut produces a spike perpendicular to the direction of that strut. You can see that one strut here leads to two spikes, 
And if you have two struts in the same direction like this, they also produce the same number of spikes, although they are more noticeable spikes. Things proceed in a similar way for struts in patterns like this. But if you have three struts in this sort of pattern, you actually get a pattern of six spikes like this. And this is exactly what happens for web. Three struts holding up the secondary mirror leads to six spikes, just like this. The interesting thing for web is that most of these spikes line up with the ones already produced by the hexagonal mirror. The only additional ones we get are the horizontal ones here. This nice graphic shows us a summary of everything we've seen, and we see the expected patterns for a bunch of possible configurations. One interesting thing to note here is that each spike in the web photo we're looking at seems to be made up of a few distinct lines. I think this is due to both the segmentation of the web mirror and also the fact that the edges of its hexagonal shape aren't smooth. The edges have this distinct shape because of the hexagonal segments that make up the primary mirror. I can't find anything to confirm this hypothesis online, so if you know more than me, please leave a comment and let me know if this is right or not. Struts are also the causes of spikes in the Hubble images. That telescope has four struts holding its secondary mirror in place, and hence we see the famous four-pointed stars in all of Hubble's images. Before I leave, let's think quickly about whether these spikes will be an issue for the science done by Webb. In short, the answer is no. It won't be a big detriment for scientific images. This photo is a 2,100 second exposure, meaning that Webb looked at this star for about 35 minutes. This star is only 2,000 light years away, and all this means that it's way brighter than almost anything else Webb is designed to look at. Diffraction spikes are way worse the brighter an object is, so for distant targets it shouldn't matter too much. But of course it will never be a 0% effect. The spikes can likely be removed after the fact anyway, but doing so loses a little bit of contrast in the rest of the image. Diffraction does still provide the ultimate limit on the resolution of the telescope. And the telescope is now in a state called diffraction limited alignment, meaning the laws of physics won't ever let the resolution improve. Just remember, the fact that we can see these spikes so clearly simply confirms that the mirrors are so perfectly aligned, and they're working exactly as we hoped and expected. Also, this image is just for engineering purposes. The incredible views that will rival the beauty of Hubble's best images will come later in the summer of 2022. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please consider subscribing and leave any questions you have about JWST in the comments below. I'll try and answer as many as I can. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.